ask Harriet to speak to us now. Uh, Harriet, is in, Harriet is in the unique position of being the only encore politician at Compass. She spoke to us last year. She's the only one to come back and do another turn. And the reason that we asked her was because it seemed to us that more than anyone else, she was in the cabinet who was talking about and fighting for the politics of equality. And we thought we should support that and recognize that. And I think Gordon Brown's incredibly lucky to have Harriet as his deputy. Harriet. <laughs> Thanks very much, Neil. It's great to see uh, everyone here today, and I'm glad to be here at what is a very important time, a time when, over the next 12 months, we've got to build on the work that we have already done and develop the progressive promise which answers the question why we need a further term of a Labour government. And I think we should see this not so much as a fourth term, but more a first term of a government to rebuild after the global economic crisis. And after the hammering we took in the polls last Thursday, the party is very disappointed, but it is absolutely not defeatist. And we acknowledge the scale of the challenges, not to wring our hands, but in order to tackle them. And our resolve is not because of pride or because of stubbornness or because we don't like losing. Our resolve is because of the imperative of those we represent who need Labour to be in government. And my, my constituents and the prospects for this country depend on us shielding them from the devastation that would be a Tory government openly threatening now 10% cuts in public services. And they depend on Labour remaining in government to take the country forward to a stronger economy and a fairer, more equal society. And our task now, and I know people here are looking forward to it, is to debate and draw together the progressive promise. Now, you can't develop the progressive promise from the top down. That's not just to acknowledge that ministers don't have a monopoly of wisdom. It's to recognise that the progressive promise has to be about how we do our politics as well as what our future plans are. And this must include the party at all levels, the whole of Team Labour, our party members, our Labour councillors, our representatives in Scotland and Wales, the affiliated trade unions, members of the European Parliament and MPs, and of course organisations and members of Compass and also what is called civic society, the community groups in our constituencies, local and national voluntary organisations. But right now, we have to acknowledge that any sort of wider debate with the public is made much more difficult by the anger and mistrust over MPs' expenses. And I know it's not popular to say it, but I firmly believe that though some MPs have clearly abused the allowance system most MPs are hard-working, decent people who come into Parliament to serve the public interests, not their own interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, I think that we've all got to understand and recognise the deep anger there is amongst Labour councillors and Labour MEPs who lost the election through no fault of their own, partly because not just because people feeling apprehensive about their own economic situation, their own financial situation, feeling less positive about their family's future makes them feel less positive about the party of government, but also because of the, at that very time, the MPs' expenses scandal hit. And there's no doubt that we have to sort out the allowances, and we'll do that in three ways. Firstly, making it completely transparent, all claims will go up on the Commons website later this month. Secondly, making it completely independent of Parliament. Later this month, we'll introduce a bill into Parliament which will set up a Parliamentary Standards Authority which will run the whole allowance system. And thirdly, with payback. All claims of all MPs over the last four years are being independently reassessed and every overpayment will have to be repaid. And we've also taken on the issue of second jobs, which some MPs do, mostly the Tories, it has to be said. 
From the 1st of July, all income will have to be fully and completely declared. And we've asked Sir Christopher Kelly, the Chair of the Committee on Standards in Public Life, to look at whether we should ban second jobs altogether so that constituents can be confident that they are the sole focus of their MPs' concern and there can be no further conflicts of interest. <laughs> As we look ahead to the next 12 months and the next general election, we have to have the same spirit in our politics that saw us bring in the national minimum wage, which saw us insist that we had Labour women alongside Labour men in the House of Commons. And that was an approach which was founded on our values and principles, sought popularity, of course it did, but which did not shrink away from controversy. We won't shrink from the controversy over the debate about Europe it might be taking a tad longer than we hoped to win the argument, but it must, be, it must be the case that a close relationship with Europe is the only way forward for our economy, for our environment, and for our security. And we, we, can't, we can't shrink from the action needed to sustain the environment. We won't avoid a debate about how we strengthen our democracy and we will say that it's not just absolute poverty that matters, but also the gap between the top and the bottom, the gap between rich and poor. And the Equality Bill that's now going through the House of Commons will place a legal duty on all public authorities, councils, health authorities, government departments and ministers all will be under a duty to act in a way that narrows the gap between those who are at the top and those who are at the bottom of society. And we'll recognise that we have to be family friendly. Now that absolutely does not mean moralising at people about their family circumstances. What it does mean is backing up families in practical ways with new children's centres, with youth centres in every neighbourhood, so parents don't have to tear their hair out wondering what their kids are up to. And with a real understanding that family life now is about bringing up children and going out to work and caring for older relatives, and that is a major public policy imperative. Now, we don't start from scratch. The progressive promise will build on and take forward the work of the last 12 years. And we will keep on with the action which is essential to take us through the global economic downturn, preventing the banks collapsing, injecting money into the economy, bringing forward public capital investment, stepping up the help and support for those who lose their jobs. And it looks as though what we've done is just, just about starting to feed through, just about starting to take effect. And we always have to show people whose side we're on. Not just we're on your side, whose side we're on. We're on the side of the person who struggles to make ends meet. The person who fears that they'll lose their job and whose housing is not good enough. And even where, as we do, we shape our policies to back those people up, we have to show them that the Labour Party is on their side by being on their doorstep. The battle against the BNP is not just about formulating and delivering the practical policies to address people's concerns. It demands an organisational response. So the BNP can never say, we're here, but the Labour Party have abandoned you, and thereby have the space to spread their myths and lies and to ferment despair. And the issue of the BNP is not just about the people who voted for them. It's about an issue for people who fear them. And it's about an issue for all of us who hate fascism and racism. And Labour is the party of black and Asian people in this country who are demeaned by and threatened by the BNP. And no party in this country will be allowed to practice political apartheid. The new Equality Bill will make it unlawful for a political party to operate a clause which excludes black and Asian people. Yeah. And this is the, the